So today we're filming a video for the Comfort Series. The Comfort Series is about how we can trust God through His Word and how His Word can bring us joy even in the toughest of trials. Mm -hmm. And so today's video is about loss and grief and I wanted to ask you if you'd be willing to share about your experience with loss and grief. Yeah, um, loss and grief is something that is close to my heart right now. Recently I've lost two people close to me including my mom and so I'm still right in the middle of the grieving journey and it's been challenging, but I've also learned a lot about myself and about others and about God in the process. Yeah. Thank you so much for being willing to share. Yeah. And I think your perspective will be really helpful for EA students and just for anyone who is grieving right now because you're in the process yourself. So for those who are going through the grieving process, like you described, what would you like to share with them in this moment? Um, I have a couple of thoughts. One is that for me, it was really important not to grieve alone. Um, and so early on, I joined a grief support group and that was really helpful. One of the things that they said in the grief support group was um, don't share advice, just share your experience. Mm -hmm. And it was really valuable to be with people all along different phases of the grief process. People who had lost someone several years ago, people who had lost somebody more recently than I had or less recently and just to be together with people and to know that yeah. even though each person's experience is different you're still not alone in it. Mm -hmm. Another piece that was really valuable for me in the grief support group was that it can feel during grieving like you're constantly feeling sad at least that was my experience. It was nice to have a place to go where I could fall apart mm -hmm. and um, know that each week I had a place to grow and learn yeah. and then in other parts of my life I was able to be more present mm -hmm. on other aspects so that was really helpful to me. Another thing that I would share with um, EA students and families is that in the grief process there it is a process and you'll feel lots of different emotions and just to know that those emotions are normal and to give yourself freedom to feel them, whatever they are in that moment. Yeah. And that if you allow yourself to be aware of your emotions and work through them, they can actually be an opportunity for, for growth and learning and connection, yeah. even the ones that might not feel desirable. Sure. I imagine that would be really freeing to not have to hold those in and to just be honest about your emotions. Yeah. And it, it doesn't mean necessarily like falling apart all the time, you sure. know, because there are going to be times when you're, you have a really fond memory of the person. Yeah. Sometimes it might mean being sad, just allowing yourself to be who you are and be genuine. And I think especially with the people closest to you because yeah. they care about you. One of the things that my mom told me was that um, God is big enough to handle all of our emotions. And yeah. so he actually, if we're honest with him, he can help us learn from them and redeem hard situations. And yeah. So that's something that I believe is really important. Yeah, I appreciate that because it pulls from the fact that we are created to be in community and created to be in the body of mm -hmm. Christ. And so grieving shouldn't be something we do alone. And then also that God can handle our emotions is such a powerful truth that we shouldn't have to feel like we have to hide anger or frustration or sadness. I really appreciate that. One other thing I was going to share was that sometimes for people who know someone who has lost somebody, it can be hard to know how to respond because you don't want to stir up sadness or upset the other person. For, from my experience, it's been really helpful to just ask people what they need. And that way, the person knows that you care about them, but they're also able to express what works for them since each person's experience is different. Yeah. So I had one friend who lost a really difficult relationship and um, when I asked her what she needed, she just said dinner once a week so that she had community. Sometimes people might just need somebody to listen. Other times they might need you to give them a hug. And it varies from time to time, but it's just nice to have people who you can call yeah. and talk to or not talk to, depending on what you need. And I don't ever want to assume that I know what somebody is going through. And so I think from that perspective of asking what they need, it allows them to describe what they're going through and um, how you can be an asset to them 
So I think I really appreciate that. Yeah, and from my perspective, most people don't mind if you ask, as long as you're not, like just don't, not making assumptions and just being sensitive, but sure. um, especially early on, it's really nice to have, to know that people care because it can be so isolating. Of course, yeah. yeah. So you mentioned that you had personal experience with this, uh, with loss and grief, and yeah. I just wanted to ask what you've learned about yourself and about God in the process of grieving. Yeah, I think one of the things that I've learned is that, I mean, with grief being a process, just to accept that what I feel is normal and healthy and just to allow myself to be a broken person, not having to have it together, especially for people close to me. Um, and that I think sometimes when we lose somebody, it can, you know, one of the reactions might be anger or hurt or just frustration of why did this happen? Why did God let this happen? All those kinds of questions. And I think just realizing that death and loss are not things that were meant to happen and that's why Jesus came. And to, to just find comfort in the fact that even if God doesn't remove a difficult situation or change a situation, He's still in it with us in that he is compassionate, and if our heart is breaking, his heart is breaking. And so just to um, take comfort from his presence. God is with us in all these things. You know, He there's the story of Lazarus who died, and Jesus didn't save him right away. Instead, Lazarus actually passed away. And when Jesus found out what happened, he wept. And just to know that even if situations don't change, even if God doesn't intervene in a miraculous way, He still cares, He still has compassion, and if we're heartbroken about something, He's heartbroken with us. And that uh, trusting God in those situations is um, a place where we can really experience His comfort. Yeah, it's so encouraging to know that we serve a God who is our Heavenly Father and who cares about us. And what you were describing reminds me of a passage um, in Psalm 13 where David is talking about the, the trials that he is facing and he's not brushing them off or trying to push down his emotions. He's honest about what he's facing and the reality of the fallen world that he lives in, but he still at the end of the day comes and recognizes God's faithfulness and how he is with him even if he can't feel him. And I think that's what you were kind of describing of um, being honest with your emotions because God can handle them and uh, but still recognizing that he is good despite the circumstances that we're in. Yeah, and that you know circumstances we can't change but we can change our reaction to them when we trust in God specifically. Mm. When he meets all our needs then we can find and it's a process for sure but we can find joy and peace and comfort in the midst of anything. Yeah, and God sent his son to redeem this fallen world. I think that's a good source of hope for, for me at least, is to know that how this world has fallen and how there is grief and loss won't be how it is always. Yeah. Um, is there a verse or anything that has been super encouraging to you in this time that you would like to share? Yeah. So this is John 11, verse 33, and this is this the section I talked about with Lazarus. And it says, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And just the idea that even if God doesn't change a situation, He still cares, He still has compassion, and it doesn't mean that He won't do something in the future. You know, He raised Lazarus from the dead. And so just, it's just such a good reminder that even if the circumstances don't change, God still cares, He wept, He had compassion, and if He doesn't change things in the moment, He will still use them for good. And it doesn't mean God is done moving. He promises eternal life to people who are in relationship with Him. Um, and He uses all things for His glory. Thank you so much for sharing today. I really appreciate your perspective, even in the midst of the grieving process and how you can still look ahead to see how Jesus and um, His sacrifice on the cross 
has made a way that um, can be without grief in the future. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Camilla. Yeah.